vacuum everything out of here. But as you can see, there's a ton of dirt in there. I'll show you how I'm cleaning the old two-stroke oil that I spilt all over the place and when I was taking out the fuel tank. Um, you can see I already cleaned here and it's coming out really good. This is the stuff I use, Spray 9. Just word of advice, don't get the one that says Marine. Get the one, just the regular one and the green, it's the exact same formula. This is just an old bottle I have that I keep on refilling with the one gallon. Uh, sometimes I use a little mixture of different stuff but so far this is one thing that I really like is this contractor solvent it really breaks down all the, the um, oil and grime and whatnot it really eats it away and also using this drill attachment brush helps out a lot so I'll show you I'll show you later. really really cleans up well I really like using this stuff on this hard to get off oil and grime and whatnot if I had the other boat it had a um, had some roofing tar in it and this stuff worked awesome to get it out um, I still like using this stuff as well it works really good too but for some reason it doesn't work as good as getting this kind of gunk out of here not as good as this stuff here. Get it at Home Depot. Actually, you get both at Home Depot. But it uh, cleans up really good. Okay, so I've used the contractor solvent, got in here, sprayed it down, and you can see the difference now inside this build. It's all nice and clean. The little marks that you see, like right here, those are really just scuff marks in the gel coat. So I'll have to go over those later on just to make sure to put some protectant on it. But you can see it got really clean. This is what I used. And it leaves behind a, a little slip film. Just use this and it takes that grease right off. Okay, the battery is hooked up. And uh, normally I wouldn't put wing nuts on a battery, but I'm taking the battery in and out multiple times, so I'm not going to put my nylocks on it right now. They're nice and tightened down, so it should give me plenty of juice to be able to turn over the, the motor right now. 
So let's check it out and see what will happen. Time to play which key goes to the ignition. Hey, not bad at all. Look at that. Not bad at all. Another good uh, compression there. Almost 120. There we go again. Really good. Like I said, pretty good compression there across all four cylinders, 115 to 120. Um, I was pretty, I'm pretty impressed with that for being a 1987 motor. So I'm pretty stoked on that. It's going to be totally worth it to rebuild the carbs and go through this motor and make sure that everything is clean. So uh, I'm going to try and see what I can get out of this guy here. Pretty good. 120 on that top side. Okay. 120 again. I would say that kicker is solid. I'm gonna use this siphon hose to get the nasty gas out of here works pretty simple stick it in there get your other end in a container there we go it's flowing now look at that nasty gas There you go, almost three gallons of varnished gas. Almost looks like fruit punch, but the gas tank is now completely empty. Got all the gas out of there, so. It's pretty good. The motor's down and I'm gonna get time to Start working on the carbs.
luckily I can sit there and with this tool I can spin this nut onto the carburetor. This is the easiest way I found to get this nut back on here. If anybody knows a little bit more simpler way of putting this carb on or taking it off please let me know in the comments because if I have to rebuild this carb again this is definitely not fun What I do is I'm going to first put a, a nut on the top part of the carb because that actually helps out. This guy on here, this way the carb doesn't fall off. You put that top nut on first and then you can put this guy on here. Makes life a little bit easier. It still is a pain in the butt to get these bottom nuts on. And then I just go all the way until it just comes to the edge of that bolt. And then <coughs> I have to do the exact same thing. This one's a lot easier to work on than that bottom carb. That bottom carb's a pain.
What I usually do to remove the lower unit, I found this idea from uh, Danger Marine. He uses a, a ratchet tie. It goes under like this, and just connects it up top. Then you want to give it some slack, like this, and crank it up. So I get it on top of the engine block up here, so that way it gives you something to hold it. And then what I'll do is I'm going to get ready to drop the lower unit. <laughs>